finally getting around to uh, building my homemade um, Sterling motor. Uh, not too much about that right now, but I'm going to use this stainless steel uh, container as a um, displacement cylinder. And as my power cylinder, I'm going to use this one inch copper pipe. So I need to do you know, quite a bit of soldering, I think. So what I'm going to do is make a soldering iron, and this is what this video is about. Um, so here's a piece of um, copper. Uh, this was something I was just playing around with, with my forge, mini forge, and um, I just melted down some copper and poured it into a mould, um, an old um, RCBS, um, normally used for lead. Um, anyway, hammered it around a bit, it's a bit beat up. So what I want to do, I want to take that down to a more symmetrical shape. So I want it to be rectangle-ish and um, have a tip at the end that's suitable for soldering. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay, so I've already started cutting this piece of copper to the rough shape I want. Bit of a mark there. Okay, so uh, with this, these old type of soldering irons, um, like I've got at my off grid place, I've got several different sizes. Used for slightly different things, so this I've got a fairly specific purpose with this. So I'm going to try cut it a little differently than what the average run of the mill is, and see if that works any better for me. So I'm going to make a cut down here, and then another one like that to kind of give a knife edge blade to the um, soldering surface. So uh, what I should have done, this would have been a really easy mould to um, do a casting into, and that's what I should be using my mini foundry for, so maybe I'll do another video of that, of casting up a soldering iron. But, okay, I won't bore you with too much more of this cutting. While I'm at it, I'm going to do a quick... This should work as a, a smaller lighter duty a smaller lighter duty soldering iron so it's just at a weird angle so
first got started in when I first got started in electronics, I was building um, crystal radio sets, and I was using these type of soldering irons to do it. And uh, what's pretty cool about them is that you don't need electricity; <clears throat> you just need some sort of you know, fairly clean flame source. And I was just using the uh, the town gas, town gas. Um, cookers in the kitchen to heat these up and solder my electronics projects. Now I've just got to drill the hole in the soldering iron to accept the handle. Again, I just demonstrate, try to demonstrate how to drill a hole in the soldering iron for the handle, and realise I'd picked a lot of drill bit. So anyway. See if I can get this thing finally done. So I'm just drilling out the, the soldering line. down about an inch. Okay, that bit's done. Okay, just need to cut a couple of pieces of wood. Okay, about the same deal here, I want to go down about an inch. 
maybe a bit more on the wood. Same size hole that I drilled in the uh, soldering iron. Go a bit further with this. Inch and a quarter. Inch and a half. Okay. Now I just have to install myself some handles. Basically, just taking off the. Two handles with holes in the end to uh, I'm going to end up fitting the um, metal shaft for the soldering iron. Okay. Um, oh, just as a side note, I recently bought one of the, the new Swiss Army styles. I've been buying this since I was pretty much the same thing since I was 12 years old. And uh, I don't like the new ones. They've got kind of like thumb grips there. That might be popular, but it's just too different. And they've also got a safety lock um, so that it doesn't close on your hand when you're using it. And that's probably a good thing, but I guess the way that I've used them, I've never had them close on my hand. But anyway, they put it in. But probably the thing I hate or dislike the most is they actually made it shorter. Just a little bit shorter than what the original ones were. So Victorinox, if you ever seen my videos, I don't like it. It needs to be the same size, the same. see that. So this is just a piece of quarter inch rod. I think that's the size of it anyway. Um, I put a couple of grind notches in the end of it. Turn that around. Yep. Um, so I want to make sure they're in the well, this position because what I'm going to do once I get it poked in there I'm going to hit down on here with a punch and try and squeeze the copper into these joins to make sure the um, rod doesn't come out. So. Stay in there. And the other 
other thing I was going to do is just put the wooden handle on. I'm just going to flatten this or rough it up a bit. It's nearly the exact right size. But... soldering iron. Now I've got one more to make but I'm going to, this one here it's a little one and uh, I'm going to make it a little differently. Uh, now with the little one it's a fairly flat, this is just a piece of scrap and I thought yeah why not give it a go. Uh, let's see if I can make a small soldering iron out of it. Um, so it's a flat, so it's not going to hold as much heat as a squarer section so that there, it's a fairly solid, large piece of copper. It's going to hold the heat pretty good. Uh, this isn't going to hold it as well, but for the small soldering jobs that I'm thinking of using this for, it should be okay. Just a quick... So, um, I did a real quick grind with the angle grinder and the bench grinder just to clean this up a little bit to make it a little more symmetrical um, but the edge what I'm going to do here is clean this off with a file now this, this piece here is what I intend to use and the tip is what I tend to use as a, a soldering edge so that should be just a little bit cleaner than the rest of the iron something similar with that one. Okay. okay, now for the other handle, I'm going to start out with a couple of pieces of, what was that, 14 gauge wire. Uh, unfortunately, it's galvanized, but um, I'll just have to make do. in that and what I'm going to do is bring that around there and do basically the same thing here and then fold it back
close to hot now. Time to put on gloves. Just gotta fit the handle to that. I should be good to go. Next thing you're gonna want to do is tin the tip, which basically means putting solder, you know, melting it onto the copper. Um, so I've sort of done that one. Just so I'm putting glue in there. It wasn't very good, but anyway. So, yeah, first deal, heat it up. See how close that is. So, not quite hot enough to melt the, the solder yet. solder is that going to show up nope so then you want to melt it in and you see I've still got some of these um uh, I didn't get it smooth enough smooth smooth enough from the um grinders so I'm probably gonna have to get the file and clean that off but so I just got the face cleaned up. Uh, used a, a fairly fine file on a bit of paper. Uh, it's still got a few little scratches in it from the grinding wheel, but I'm gonna just give that a go again and see if that tins up well enough for me to use. Okay, once again. Now it's actually too hot. But it's tinning up. That's good. Good. So it looks like the video so it looks like that's tinned up okay now so I'm just melting the solder onto it I was going to do a little bit around this side Be 
big issue. I got the main face done. That's all I was really after. some soldering with it. So what's pretty cool about this style of soldering iron, so not only can you um, you know use it just about anywhere, it makes an ideal off-grid homestead tool. You can use it, you know, something like this, you could use it to um, solder um, battery cables together. So now you apply the little bit to the the iron, and then you're going to want to apply the iron to the joint, and then the solder to the joint. And um, yeah, you should be able to get a pretty good solder joint with that. Sorry, you probably can't see this. It looks like the iron's probably covered enough, but anyway. So, that's... Okay. And like I said, it can do really heavy... Um, really heavy soldering jobs. Which most of your electric irons can't do. And something else... It can do... So I just clean that up with a bit of emery cloth. I'm gonna just uh, heat it up again. Um, contact with the solder. Once again, this is just a just to demonstrate what's possible. Oops, moved it. Just to demonstrate what's possible with a large, old-fashioned soldering iron. If I could just hold it still, it would dry. There you have it. So, anyway, I just built this just to make my uh, want to do some soldering on my Sterling engine that I'm trying to build, and uh, needed an old, well, I needed a large soldering iron, and didn't want to pay for an expensive uh, electrical one, so I just made that. I've got several of those up at my off-grid place um, that I use pretty regularly. Um, you know, for, like I said, setting up, uh, soldering together battery cables or soldering the joints on the battery cables, you know, for the batteries. And, um, so yeah, lots of uses. This is an example of strength. <laughs> 